Hello and welcome to Consider This. I'm Sherrod Kutten. Today's Christmas Eve, tomorrow's Christmas. So to all you Christians out there, a Merry Christmas uh, uh, rather early. Um, Christianity, as you might or might not know, um, is a significant religion in this country. About 9.2% uh, of the population uh, identifies as Christian. That was from the 2010 uh, census. But two thirds of them reside in Sabah and Sarawak. Now, the, the territory of Sarawak, in fact, has a Christian majority population. Very interesting facts that perhaps shape uh, our understanding of uh, the way Christians and Christianity is in this country. To help me understand more about the religion and the community that it uh, is kind of uh, rooted in, I have a Pastor Fergus Ong. He's with uh, Sidang Injil Borneo, S-I-B-K-L. That's a church in the Klang Valley. And also uh, Emmanuel Joseph, who is a co-director of Project Dialogue, an effort to foster interfaith and intercultural dialogue. So thank you so much, gentlemen, for being here. Hi, it's you. wonderful to have you here yeah. now, Christmas. Thanks for having us. Yeah, Christmas is something that many people who are not Christians perhaps uh, would associate with a lot of the outward signs of Christianity. Uh, and in this case, the shopping malls have run away <laughs> and, st and in taken hold of the yeah. iconography of uh, Christianity and Christmas and sort of given it its own meaning. But okay, but we know, of course, that there are <coughs> other conversations that deeper meanings to it. Uh, let me start with you, Fergus. You're a pastor within a church and a very young pastor by the looks of it. Uh, tell us about Christmas. How do you, how do you define Christmas for your congregants? Well, I think, uh, Sharad, I think it's interesting because when you talk about Christmas, it almost seems like there are two kinds of Christmases. There is the Christmas of the Santa Claus and the, and the, and the Winter Wonderland and the reindeers and all that stuff that you see that you made mention of um, in the shopping malls. And then, there is, and then there is the Christmas of the birth of Jesus. And, and we kind of know that that is the true meaning of Christmas, but it's always kind of like obscured and, and kind of like faded and like a background process that's running. So, um, so, and maybe I can understand why people would be quite happy to just go along for the merry ride and just, and just you know, go through Christmas because it's the end of the year, everyone's tired and you've worked, you've worked hard, you know, and, 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 but I think that in the midst of all this, it's important for the true meaning of Christmas to not get obscured. And, and if you were to ask me what the true meaning of Christmas is, I would say that it is, it is to celebrate the birth of, of a hope, a birth of a light, you know, um, that if you, if you can say the one who would come to give you hope, to give you life, which, which is Jesus, which as Christians we believe is Jesus, um, the one who comes to, if you can say, pay off the debt of our moral failings, you know. Okay, uh, very interesting. <coughs> you know, I want to ask Emmanuel if you can jump in sure, here on yeah. that because I understand also a little bit about, the, you know, when it comes to Christian history, that Christmas wasn't always the big festival. In fact, perhaps, uh, you know, Good Friday uh, yeah. and yeah. Easter Sunday, yeah. much more significant uh, from a religious point or a theological point of view. But it, growing up as a Christian yourself, yeah. Emmanuel, and from the Catholic Church, what did Christmas mean for you? Um, thanks, Sherrod. Basically, I think for many Christians, there are, for, generally speaking, there are three layers of this whole uh, Christmas celebration, like Pastor mentioned earlier. There's the whole revelry, the whole um, church, uh, sorry, the uh, shopping centers, uh, Santa Claus, um, um, snow, uh, snow mm. and uh, the snowman and Which stuff Which is like interesting that. because <coughs> this is a religion yeah. that comes from the Middle East. We should actually is. be having sand <laughs> dunes yeah. and yeah. camels. Yes, sand right, dunes, camels, camels hot not, not, not the Christmas, Christmas turkey, <laughs> but you know, um, breads and hummus. And, <laughs> 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 yes. hummus yeah. and baba ganoush. Okay, yes. tell us more. Okay, so that's that one Christmas. Yeah. And what are the other Christmas? So the other layer would be um, what we understand as the true meaning of Christmas. Uh, many people speak of it as faith, hope, charity, love, almsgiving, um, visiting the poor, stuff like that. Um, then there's the third, more symbolic religious layer, which would be, of course, the birth of Jesus, uh, you know, uh, light of the world. Yeah. Uh, we believe in the coming of the Messiah, etc. So there's the three layers of it. And for me personally, like, even if you skim the first layer beneath all the revelry, just to touch a little bit of that second layer, it's already touching a more deeper, meaningful uh, Christmas yeah. Yeah, for most. And yeah. so in terms of kind of speaking to a community apart from your congregation, mm -hmm. right? Which is already there, the part of the faith community and have a sense of the religion. Uh, it, do you think it's important for you as somebody who's a, a kind of a religious worker to, to kind of explain this other meaning to non-Christians? I mean, is that something that you and your church seeks to do? Yes, very much so. In fact, that is why um, our 
uh, for, Christmas, for, for our Christmas services, you know, our doors are flung wide open. We encourage as many people to invite their friends and families in. But far beyond just whatever happens in the four walls of the church, I think it's important in this season for us to be carrying that conversation outside of the church, you know. And that's one of the reasons why, uh, why I'm here today. One of the reasons why um, throughout this season I've been having lots of conversations with, with many friends um, about what is Christmas all about. And I think that there's a general curiosity. Um, and I think maybe I've, from, from, the, from some of the people I've been speaking to, they don't always know what that background process is. They know that this birth of Jesus, but they don't really know much more about it. And, and it's, it, it's, a, it's a good time to be talking about that. Okay, so it's an opportunity and an occasion to have those conversations. Emmanuel, are people that curious? I always think of Malaysians as being quite happy to deal with other people's religion and culture in terms of food. So mm -hmm. we're all great with the food exchanges. <laughs> But, you know, getting to the yeah. philosophy, well, mm -hmm. okay, don't really mm -hmm. want to go there necessarily because mm -hmm. food is good enough. What, what's your feeling about it? I think that food is a great starting point, uh, like many things that we have in the season. A Christmas tree is symbolic of something. Mm -hmm. So there's a deeper story behind it, the wood of the cross, etc. So there are many versions of it. Mm -hmm. Gingerbread man, there's a story behind it. it <laughs> it's, an, it's an opportunity for us to speak about something deeper. Mm -hmm. So food is a great starting point. Um, the season of the celebration is a great starting point. Yeah. But there could be something deeper for us to share. Because a shared faith is not necessarily just preaching. It's also shared values, common universal values that bring us together uh, as a Malaysian family. Right. So, and Malaysian is a nice way to get into the yeah. next part of the, uh, yeah. the dimension of the question, which is that the image of Christmas is somehow coming from the West, coming mm. from Europe, yep. as opposed to its actual origins in the Middle East. Yep. Uh, where does, how does Christianity, especially in a church that is multi, uh, multi-racial, multi-ethnic, and largely tropical Asian, mm. how do you deal with this image of Christianity as Western? I mean, it's, it's interesting because um, in, in my church, um, the different groups, uh, um, age groups, or, or, or you can say districts, um, take turns to decorate the church building every year, and and so we and so different years you might you might see the winter wonderland come out, you know, and some years you don't. Um, and I'm not opposed to it as long as it acts as a stepping stone and, and a pathway towards um, as as uh, EJ was was talking about, as it ha if it helps you go from the commercial layer uh, to a more meaningful layer. Uh, I'm quite happy for a Christmas tree to lead us there. Okay, yeah. so if it's not a Christmas tree, what would it be? Would you have some tropical fruit and stuff <laughs> going on? I don't know, like you said, sand dunes and camels and... Sand dunes yeah, and camels, yeah. okay. Uh, the last minute we have, EJ, sure. um, if you were going to kind of like, uh, you know, kind of encapsulate the Christmas message, because, you know, like Dipper Valley, tri mm -hmm. light of, Triumph of the Darkness, what would you say Christmas was? I think it's about hope. Um, that's the biggest thing because um, back in the origin story of Christmas, there was a time it was dark and there was no hope. So that's a universal thing that we can share even today it's Malaysia, you know, in the hopelessness or in uh, whatever problems that we face, there's always hope. Okay, I think that's oh, yeah. wonderful. We'll take a short break. We'll be back uh, with me tonight, uh, Pastor Fergus Ong from SIBKL and Emmanuel Joseph from Project Dialogue. We'll be back. Stay tuned.